Hi, this is Mrs. T for Mrs. T's Chem Talk AP Chem, chemistry teacher at Calhoun High School, if you don't know me. Um, this is going to be a review of gravimetric analysis. For those of you in my class, you know that you're going to be having a quiz on gravimetric analysis coming up very soon. So what we're going to do in the video will be something that will help you to prepare for that gravimetric analysis. And this will also be similar to what we just recently did in lab. So if we read the question, it says, when a 1.42 gram sample of a pure unknown substance, M2SO4, was treated with excess aqueous calcium chloride, all the sulfate ions precipitated as calcium sulfate. If the mass of precipitate collected after washing, filtering, and drying was 1.36 grams, find the molar mass of the substance and the identity of the metal M. So in order to do this, the first thing we're going to need to do is kind of figure out what steps we need. And usually for gravimetric analysis, we're going to go from the grams of precipitate to moles of precipitate. And then we're going to work backwards to get moles of some reactant that was present before the precipitate was formed. And in this case, the next step is going to be to use that information along with the grams of the substance that were put in to find the molar mass. So in order to do that, we have to put our two reactants up. So we have M2SO4, which means some unknown metal M combined with sulfate. SO4 has a negative 2, which is why this 2 is here. That tells us that M has a plus 1 charge. M is probably a group 1 metal. Calcium chloride is CaCl2 because calcium is a group 2 metal with a plus 2 charge. Cl has a minus 1 charge. We're going to switch the places. We're going to put the M in front of the Cl and the Ca in front of the SO4. Crisscross and drop the signs and get our two products. And then we need to go through and we need to balance it. So if we look, there's two M's on the left, only one M on the right, two CLs on the left, only one CL on the right. So in order to balance it, we're just going to pop a two in front of the MCL. Now the SO4 was already balanced and the CA was already balanced, so we're all set there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look in our balanced equation here and we're going to notice that, okay, this 1.36 grams is the grams of the calcium sulfate precipitate. That's where we're starting. We're starting with the calcium sulfate precipitate. The information about the 1.42 gram sample of M2SO4, that's going to be used later. So that we're going to hold on the back burner. But for now, we're going to start with our 1.36 grams of calcium sulfate, and we're going to do our dimensional analysis in order to convert this into moles, which means that we need to know the gram formula mass of calcium sulfate. And remember, we're going to multiply by one mole over the gram formula mass. And that is going to help us cancel out our units. And if you cancel while you're here, grams of calcium sulfate cancels with grams here. And right now we're in moles of calcium sulfate. The next thing that we're going to want to get into, we're going to want to get from moles of calcium sulfate, which is our product, to moles of M2SO4, which was our reactant. Now we're always going to use the coefficients in the balanced equation whenever we're switching from moles of one substance to moles of another substance. So we have a 1 in front of the M2SO4 and a 1 in front of the CaSO4, which means that now when I cancel out my CaSO4s, my final unit after I do this is going to be moles of M2SO4. When we do the math, if you do the math with me, you're going to do the 1.36 divided by 136.14, and your answer is going to come out to 0 0.00998897 moles of M2SO4. Now, I didn't round this number yet because we're just going to be comparing it to try to find the identity for the molar mass, so this does not need to go to significant figures here. When we work with moles and grams, we know that this number of moles of M2SO4 was equal to our original 1.42 grams of M2SO4 that we put in. And we know that to get the gram formula mass, which is the same thing as the molar mass, we're going to put our grams over moles because the unit for molar mass is grams per mole. So if I look back in the problem again, it was 1.42 gram sample 
for 0 0.009987 moles of M2SO4. And when I simply divide this out, I get my gram formula mass of 142.15 grams per mole. Once I do that, and again, you should do that on the calculator, 1.42 divided by 0 0.009987, you're going to get this number of 142.15. Now, because in the beginning, we said that M had a plus one charge, we're going to look at the gram formula masses for the group one metal sulfates. We're going to look at lithium sulfate, sodium sulfate, potassium sulfate, and we're going to try to see which one of those is close or is closest to 142.15. And when we do that, we found that we find a winner in sodium sulfate. So the gram formula mass of the unknown metal sulfate is 142.04, and the identity of the metal is sodium. Once again, we can use gravimetric analysis to work backwards. We take a mass of a precipitate, which is a solid formed in an aqueous reaction. We take that mass and we work towards the moles of that precipitate and backwards towards an amount of a reactant. That's always what we're going to do in gravimetric analysis and is start with a product grams, moles, or some other amount, usually grams, work backwards through the stoichiometry to get grams or moles of a reactant, and then there'll usually be another step there. In this case, we went to the molar mass. Um, in other cases, you can go to percent composition or things like that. But this was just a simple review of the gravimetric analysis. This will be similar to what you'll see on your quiz coming up, and hopefully this was helpful. Have a good day.